climate risks dominate global concerns as the world enters a third year of the pandemic. This according to the World Economic Forum's just released Global Risks Report 2022. The top long-term risks relate to climate. Uh, the top shorter-term global concerns include societal divides, livelihood crises, and mental health deterioration. Additionally, most experts believe a global economic recovery will be volatile and uneven over the next three years. We're now joined by Sadia Zahidi, who's the Managing Director and Head of Risk at the World Economic Forum. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Zahidi. Uh, good afternoon to you. To what extent uh, do we see risks in this year different from those uh, that we had pre-pandemic? And how has the pandemic made a difference in your view? Hi, good to, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, we asked our respondents to tell us uh, what their overall outlook is for the world. And it's very clear that people are incredibly concerned about where we currently are. 84% of our respondents are either concerned or worried about the state of the world, and less than 4% are optimistic about where we're heading. And you see that come through in the question where we ask them, which global risk has become worse over the course of the last two years? Number one, social cohesion has deteriorated. Number two, there's major concern about livelihoods and jobs. Number three, a lot of concern around climate action. Number four, um, mental health deterioration. And number five, extreme weather. So it's this confluence of social and climate-related factors that the world is most concerned are not being dealt with over the course of the pandemic. Thanks for that. Um, the risk associated with, you know, divergence as far as growth is concerned, associated with a different pace of economic recovery due to vaccine access, other fiscal differences, seems to be leading to new levels of inequality. But what, what do you, what's your outlook as far as the best way to manage that type of risk? So there's uh, two different types of divergence occurring. One is between countries. So um, the growth trajectory in developing and developed economies is, is starting to um, diverge. And this will remain a concern until we make the right kinds of investments on helping developing economies recover. And then there's the second element, which is within uh, develop and developing economies alike, you are starting to see growing income inequality. The richest have been able to recuperate um, many of the losses of the last couple of years, whereas those that are in the poorest income brackets have actually further reduced their income. Now, the way forward has to be investments that help societies recover. That's going to mean a lot more investment in healthcare. Um, because there will be future health-related crises and these systems are already overburdened. It's going to require major investment in education. And that's not just for school children, that's also for adults because they will need the skills to be able to prepare for the jobs of tomorrow. And then that is the third category, a lot more investment in job-creating sectors in developing and developed economies and like. And that goes far beyond traditional thinking around investing, for example, in physical infrastructure it's as much about investing in social infrastructure, which is a huge job creator. Thank you so much for that. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking your answer for this next question will probably be along the same lines. For Africa, which is you know, a critical risk area, uh, what does leadership here need to do differently, considering all these risks that you've outlined? You know, the situation so far has been one of dealing with an emergency and coming out of this mindset and focusing on what does a resilient, sustainable, inclusive recovery look like? What are the areas that require investment? And especially, you know, I heard what you said about the, the, the report just before, we are looking at an outlook where things will become even more constrained economically. So this is the moment to think about what is the right mix of policies and investments. And this is where, again, investing on the social side of things and preparing for investing in the green transition, the technologies that will create those future jobs, that's really where the focus has to be. Thank you so much. Um, digital threats, still somewhat new, I mean, to African businesses, but of course, they're dealing with cybersecurity here. What are your thoughts on this, especially for developing economies as far as those digital threats are concerned? Yeah, this has been one of those really interesting results that has come through for the next uh, two years. We asked respondents to look at the next two-year timeframe. 
two to five years and then five to 10 years. And it's very clear that in the next two years, there is on the one hand, a major concern about digital inequality with half the planet still not having basic access to the internet. And at the very same time, a lot of concern about cyber security and cyber threats. And this is where there needs to, again, be a very managed transition. On the one hand, we absolutely need to ensure that the whole planet is connected. That is a great source of livelihoods and future income for much of the world uh, or education or skills. And at the same time, we also have to ensure that then that doesn't create additional cyber threats. And the technology for both exists. We need the political will to make it happen. All right. Now, as far as, you know, social cleavages and tensions be uh, mounting as inequality and limited fiscal space have led to more difficulty, especially after two years of the pandemic, which your new report talks about. How can this risk element be best managed from a country, multilateral and, and business perspective? So very rightly, most countries at a domestic level and at a short term level are extremely concerned about livelihoods. They're concerned about corruption. They're concerned about healthcare systems. They're deeply concerned about how the remaining after effects of this pandemic will be managed. And that makes a lot of sense in a domestic context. And that is where governments need to have that longer term vision and have the right kind of investment locally. But at the same time, it's also very clear that many of the solutions are going to require global cooperation, either because we need that global cooperation for things such as climate change that are truly global threats and global risks, or because the best examples on what needs to be done actually requires sharing examples between countries. And that is where governments will have to look up from just the domestic picture and look out towards others that may be in a very similar situation and may have found interesting policy innovations to deal with the situation. Thanks. Just a minute to go, or less than a minute. I, I want to quickly get your thoughts on uh, rate hikes from developed economies and how emerging markets can deal with that and the vulnerabilities that could expose them to. So what that is likely to do is raise borrowing costs and raise the costs of financing in those countries that have dollar denominated debt. However, that doesn't change that it's still on those governments to determine where should that financing go? Where should the investments of those governments lie? And there the answer again comes back to investing in future social and climate resilience. Sadia, uh, Sadia Zahidi, uh, Managing Director and Head of Risk at the World Economic Forum, thank you so much for your time and talking to us about your latest report. Appreciate it.